Are you looking for an easy PixInsight workflow that you can follow along with? This video takes my PixInsight process tutorials and puts them together into a basic workflow that anyone can follow. Hey everyone, it's Tony with Hidden Light Photography. And today is the day where my PixInsight process tutorials come together into a workflow. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. And we're gonna be walking through a basic PixInsight tutorial, and I'm gonna show you how all those processes come together. So let's head on over and see how a basic PixInsight workflow is done. For my basic PixInsight workflow video, we're gonna be working with our closest galactic neighbor, M31 or the Andromeda Galaxy. Now, I like to think of PixInsight workflows in three stages. You have your corrections, your stretching, and your beautification. And an analogy I like to use is restoring an old car. More specifically, the bodywork and paint portion of that. With the bodywork, you are uh, correcting the body of any and all imperfections. And you do that using different processes such as welding, metal shaping, whatever you need to do to actually uh, remove the imperfections of the body so you have optimal results when it comes to painting. Then the painting portion of it is finalizing all of that hard work that you put into the body of the car. And then you beautify it with buffing, polishing, and perhaps even a top coat like wax or ceramic. The same thing when it comes to processing an image. You have the corrections that you do to your image, such as background extraction, star correction, noise reduction, color balancing, and color calibration. And then you stretch your image. You finalize that data. And then you beautify it. You adjust saturation curves, fine tune contrast, and then in more advanced uh, workflows, you sharpen, you adjust local histogram equalizations. And there's a saying that I love, months to prep, a day to paint. And what that means is the more attention to detail that you put into the corrections that you make to your image, the better the outcome you're gonna have. So to get started, we're gonna open up our master file, and this is gonna be located in the output directory that you specified within WBPP. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna navigate, and we're gonna go to File, Open, and we're going to navigate to the file or the folder that you have your master files in. In this case, for me, it's M31. And your uh, output folder for WBPP might look different than uh, mine. And the only difference really is WBPP will give you registration files, log files, all kinds of different files that realistically you don't need. Um, I, they're very large, they take up a lot of room, I just delete those. And what I leave myself with are my original subframes from the Knights of Imaging, my light frames, dark frames, flat frames, dark flat frames, and then of course my master files. So we're gonna go into the master files and what you'll find is your master reference files, your master dark files, master flat files, and your master light files. Now, a lot of these are gonna be your different color channels. And this is, um, in WBPP, I like the script to actually separate my color channels, process individually, and then recombine. And this is more of a um, results may vary, if you will. So try it both ways. I find that I get better results if I allow WBPP to separate my color channels, process, recombine. You may or may not find the same results. So try it both ways, see what you like better. 
what we are concerned about is the master light file, which is, as you see here, combined RGB auto crop and then combined RGB. WBPP does a very good job of auto cropping. I like to put my own touch on an image and crop it myself. However, if I like the way WBPP cropped an image, I'll just use that. For this example though, this um, basic workflow walkthrough, I'm gonna use an uncropped image because I want you to be aware of something, which we'll get into in the, um, the DBE or dynamic background extraction part of this. So I'm gonna open the unauto cropped image. Now, you're gonna find that the image is very dark and that's okay. It just needs to be stretched. Now, what we're gonna do here is for a combined RGB color image, we're gonna use screen transfer function up until the point that we actually stretch our image. For any stretching that we're gonna do, always ensure that whatever window you're gonna be doing stretching on, you have 24-bit stretch factor enabled. I'm gonna click on that right now for this window. We're gonna to go to process, all processes, screen transfer function. Now, on here, there's two icons that we're gonna be working with. The first one is the link icon. When the link icon is selected, as you see here being highlighted, screen transfer function is going to stretch all of your color channels equally across the board. Unlinking the color channels as seen here with the link icon not highlighted, screen transfer function is going to stretch your color channels independently from each other. The radiation icon is actually stretching the image. Now, when I'm working with an RGB color image, as we are right here, I'll use screen transfer function. Otherwise, if I'm working with a grayscale image, I'll just hit control A. You can do either way. With a grayscale, you can use the screen transfer function. I just find it quicker and easier to hit control A when it comes to a grayscale image. Now, let's go ahead and first stretch our image with the color channels unlinked. This is gonna give us an idea of the data that we have within the image. So 24-bit 24 24-bit 24 stretch factor is enabled. Our uh, image window, we're gonna click on it. Now it's blue, that's enabled. The link icon is unhighlighted. So our color channels are not linked. And we're gonna click the radiation icon. This is our image. This is the data that we have to work with. Now, now that we know the potential of our image, let's go ahead and link the color channels and hit the radiation icon again. Here we have a much different image. This is okay. This just means that our color channels are not balanced. Now, Using the unlinked portion of screen transfer function, that will balance the color channels as best as it can. Linking them, thus stretching the color channels equally across the board, shows how unbalanced the color channels are, as we see right here. Now, how do we balance this? Well, first we need to find out which color channel is most prominent in the image. It's easy to say in this example here that it's blue. Don't ever assume. The answer might shock you. Now, what we need to do is go to Process, All Processes, Statistics. We're going to choose our image. The name is always right up at the top drop down menu, select our image. 
Now we have our red channel, our green channel, and our blue channel. The mean value of our red channel is 4.355. The mean value of our green channel is 8.964. And the mean value of our blue channel is 1.363. The blue channel is actually our weakest channel. Our most prominent channel is our green channel. So that's what I mean. Don't ever assume that what you see is the most prominent. You could have a blue cast like you see here, a green cast, or a red cast. And that never means that that color that you have the cast of is the most prominent. There's some images where I have a blue cast and blue truly is the most prominent. So the moral of this always go into statistics and look at the mean values of your color channels and use the hard data to determine which channel is most prominent. So now we can exit out of statistics and in order to balance our color channels, we need to separate them from this image. And we do that with this icon over at my cursor over here. So we're gonna click that. And we have our blue channel, our green channel, and our red channel. For each of these windows, I'm going to enable 24-bit um, stretch factor over at my cursor over here. And being that they're grayscale, I can either just use screen transfer function or just push control A. So I'm gonna activate my blue channel window, 24 bit uh, stretch factor, control A. Activate my green channel window, 24 bit stretch factor, control A. Highlight my red channel window, 24 bit stretch factor, control A. For the sake of room, our original image, I'm going to minimize and move off to the side. Now, now that we have our channels, our different color channels separated and um, auto stretched, in order to balance them, what we're going to do is go to process, all processes, and we're gonna to go to linear fit. Now the reference image is going to be our prominent color channel. In our case with this image here is going to be green. So we're gonna click on this icon, drop down menu, select our green channel, hit okay. And now I can take our green channel and just minimize that to get it out of the way. And here, we have our red channel. So all we're gonna do is take the triangle and drop it onto our red channel and our blue channel. So let's start with the red channel since that's right here. Now you might see some goofy things happen, that's okay. You did not break the image. All you do, ensure 24-bit stretch factor is active. Click on your window to activate it, control. A since it's grayscale. Now let's grab our blue channel, grab the triangle, drag and drop. And once again, you did not break the image. Activate the window, 24 bit stretch factor is active, control A. Now we can exit out of linear fit our color channels are now balanced. So we're gonna minimize the red channel and the uh, blue channel, move them off to the side. Now we need to recombine our newly balanced channels. And we do that with process, all processes, channel combination. Ensure RGB is selected, blue channel, Check this little icon, do the uh, drop down, select our blue channel, hit OK. Green is gonna be our green channel. 
hit OK. Red is going to be our red channel. Hit OK. And now we're going to hit the little circle. Now we can exit out of our channel combination. And now we have our new image with our newly balanced color channels. Now we can just, for the sake of room, get rid of our color channels. This is just letting us know that if we exit out, we lose any unsaved data. That's okay because we already combined them. So we're just going to hit yes. I'm going to move our new image over. I'm going to bring up our old image. Now our old image, our original image, has the 24-bit stretch factor applied and a linked stretch. Now, if we were to take our new image with our uh, properly balanced color channels, let's activate that window, activate 24-bit stretch factor, screen transfer function linked is checked, hit the radiation icon, and now we have a much different image. In fact, if we were to take our new image, let's unlink the channels, hit the radiation icon. Now watch the galaxy. I'm going to link the channels, radiation, unlink the channels, radiation. We are as close as we can get. Our channels are balanced. We can now exit out of our original image. And from here, we're going to work with our new image. Now what we're going to do is we're going to correct the stars. And this is going to correct any aberrations or imperfections that can cause distortions within dynamic background extraction, um, background neutralization, and spectrophotometric color calibration. So to do this, we're going to go to Process All Processes. We're going to go to Blur Exterminator. Now, this uh, process, if you need further help with uh, Blur Exterminator, I'm going to have a uh, link to my tutorial video in the description of this video. So if you need help with it, uh, please check out that video. Uh, we're going to have correct only checked. We're going to drag and drop. And what this is doing is correcting the stars. Now we see the percentage complete. Once that reaches 100%, watch the stars and what happens. There we go. In fact, in the top left, if we check back, here's before and here's after. So now we're going to exit out of Blur Exterminator for the time being. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use uh, dynamic background extraction. In fact, you can see a lot of harsh gradient. This happens with, um, you know, heavy moon cast. Uh, I think I was close to full moon uh, when I imaged uh, Andromeda. And uh, light pollution can also cause this and uh, this was in my northern sky and uh, the lights from the city of phoenix are heavily polluting my northern sky so i'm batting a thousand with this image but we're going to correct it so this right here is where the um the cropping comes in this is why i wanted to use an unauto cropped image because i want to show you something to be aware of let's zoom in and let's go to the edges do you see this difference in the background here? From here to here. In fact, if we come over here, it's a little bit more obvious, okay? Scan the edges of your image and we need to get rid of items like this. In fact, I'm not sure if the video can quite pick it up, but there's a very slight difference between this section and this section, the line being right here. So 
always scan. I'm just going to kind of go through this pretty quick over here because I already know where the issues are in this image. Take a look at this right here. And you'll see vertical lines the whole way down. Now, what causes this? This is um, stacking artifacts. Andromeda on this this Andromeda image was imaged over four nights. So we have dithering. We have rotational um, differences. And then we stack the image and we get issues on the edges. This is normal. This is where cropping comes in. So what we're, we're going to do is process all processes. We're going to go to dynamic crop. And we're going to crop this image a bit. This is going to be to your liking. It's going to be uh, your touch, right? So once we have our crop window selected, we're going to hit the green check mark. This is letting us know that our astrometric solution is going to be lost once we um, finalize this. That's okay. I'm going to show you how to get that back. So we're just going to hit yes. We're going to double check our work. And I think that we should be looking pretty good. All right. Now, notice how the image no longer fits the window. That can sometimes be bothersome. Over at my cursor, this icon right here, check that. And now we're refitted. Now we're going to exit out of dynamic crop. And now it's time for background extraction. And what we're going to do is go to process all processes. We're going to go to dynamic background extraction. If you need further help with this process right here, check out the link in the description of this video. I go over in depth how to use this. But basically what we're going to do is click on the image, you get your crosshairs, and then we're just going to start setting some samples around the background, avoiding stars and avoiding any structure such as a galaxy or nebula. Now you'll see the green highlighted sample. We have a star in the preview window. We just click and hold that sample and move it to where um, there's no stars. Now, um, you have two options. You can remove the stars and um, do your samples that way. Uh, just for an example, I'm going to do it with the stars in it. And in fact, I already have this set up. So to save time, let's exit out of dynamic background extraction. I already have this image set up. Now, one thing to be aware of, I'm just ensuring that my new crop doesn't have any of my samples off grid. Okay, we're looking pretty good there. So, um, this seems like an excessive amount of samples. It probably is, but again, I am doing this uh, with the stars in, which means I need smaller sample size um, to get around the stars since this is such a dense star field. So I need more samples to properly sample the background. And you'll notice in the corners, a couple of them are red, and that is due to the weight. In fact, the sample that we have selected down in the bottom right corner has a weight of zero. So if we were to increase our tolerance to, say, three, that weight just became 88%. If we just click on any old sample, we'll notice that they now are gray. This sample that I'm currently on is showing a star, so I'm just going to move that sample. Now, I want all of my samples to be above 90% on the weight. This particular one that's selected is at 88.3. Let's go to 
5 on the tolerance. We're at 89.9. Let's go to 3.7. 90.5. Let's go to 3.9. Brings us to 91. That seems like a good buffer. The next thing I want to do, up at the top of the window, you'll see the rewind buttons. The far left one brings us to sample number one. I'm going to quickly blink through these using this um, button that my cursor is on. I'm going to simultaneously watch weight and the preview window, ensure that all weights are above 90% and there's no stars in the preview window. Oh, there's one. So we're going to find the sample that's highlighted in green, which is right over here. We're going to scoop that out of the way. There's a couple more. We're going to scoop this sample out. We're going to move this sample. You don't want any stars or uh, structure to be included in the samples. You can get some goofy results that you don't want to deal with. So, and this comes into the months to prep a day to paint. The more effort that you put into your preparation, the better your final results will be. And who wants to do more work than they need to? So we're just going to ensure that everything is correct. And once we have this portion done, then we can go ahead and actually extract the background. and then do a background neutralization, which is going to uh, prep us for color calibration. Now, while I'm doing this, this workflow video is meant as a guide to allow you something to follow along with to get an idea of the um, workflow, a basic workflow. And when um, we have processes like this, which are more in depth, I'll have the tutorial videos uh, in the description of this video so you have something to reference back on. Uh, as always though, if you ever need help with anything, please do not hesitate to ask. Um, now that we're done with checking our samples, I'm gonna add a couple of more in the dark regions, the background regions of this uh, image. We always want to use a correction factor of subtraction. And then I always take the triangle, drag it onto the workspace because, well, just like you saw, if I ever had to come back, let's exit out of background dynamic. Um, we just double click on it and it brings it right back up. So then now that we have everything done, our weights, uh, correct using tolerance. My smoothing factor is at default value 0.25 because I don't have a lot of well-defined structure. Triangle and drop. We have 24-bit stretch factor enabled. Control A on the background model. This is what was extracted. Let's exit out of that. Uh, on our new window, we're going to enable 24-bit stretch factor. Ensure that screen transfer function is linked. Since this is an RGB image, we're using screen transfer function. Radiation icon. 
Let's exit out of dynamic background extraction. We'll bring our new image with the extracted background next to our original image. And there you go. That gradient is now gone. And don't ever be discouraged. This takes practice. Okay, this takes trial and error. So always be proud of what you do. Never be discouraged. You know, just just keep going, keep trying. Um, we're gonna minimize our original image. Let's bring our dynamic background extraction processes off to the side, just in case we need them later. In case an irre irreversible mistake is made and we need to start over, we at least are ahead of the game in some way. Now we're gonna do a background neutralization. So over at my cursor, this little tab right here, or this little icon is for a preview. We're gonna zoom in. Let's grab a small sample of the background, no stars or structure. We're gonna to go to process, all processes, background neutralization. And if you ever need to reset a process, this bottom right tab will reset. We're gonna choose our current image, image 05 underscore DBE, hit okay. And we're going to, in our preview, choose our preview. So region of interest from preview, drop down preview, hit okay. Uh, grab a triangle, drag and drop. And our background is now neutralized. So what we're gonna do is go to preview, deselect all. And now we're ready to color calibrate our image. Except SPCC or spectrophotometric color calibration requires an astrometric solution to be applied. And if you remember when we did our cropping, our astrometric solution was erased. Now there's one more process or one more um, item that can actually delete the astrometric solution and that is reorientating your image. Now, if you notice here, poor Andromeda is upside down. So let's turn her around. Let's go into image, geometry, rotate 180 degrees, and now she's right side up. That's another item that will get rid of the astrometric solution. So now that we're cropped, we're orientated, let's reapply astrometric solution. And we do that by going into script, image analysis, image solver, make sure active window is selected. I like to run my image scale off of focal distance. So this is gonna be the, um, focal length of your telescope. This was imaged with my Celestron Omni XLT 150. So that has a 750 millimeter focal length. Um, and then pixel size, I was using an ASI 2600 MC camera, which has a pixel size of 3.76. We're going to go to search, search your target. In this case, M31, we'll hit search. You'll sometimes get a couple of air, uh, items that you can choose from. Just choose the closest one. We have Andromeda. Hit the drop down M31. Okay and okay. Now, this is plate solving the image. It's going to assign the spatial coordinates to the image. And then SPCC or spectrophotometric color calibration is going to take that information know exactly where it's at in the sky and assign the um, proper colors to everything. Now, this sometimes takes a few seconds to go. There we go. We're going to go to process all processes, spectrophotometric color calibration. 
Again, if you need further assistance with spectrophotometric color calibration, check out the link in the description of this video. I go in depth as to what this does and how it does it. Uh, what we're gonna do is select our sensor that we use. In this case, I was the uh, 571. I was using an L Pro uh, filter from Optolong. The closest uh, wave uh, wavelength was the Anthea Tri-Band. I go over how to determine that within Curve Explorer in my tutorial. Um, you need the Gaia DR3SP database downloaded and installed. I go over that as well in the tutorial. So make sure to check out that video if you need some help. We need a sample of the background. So again, or a preview I should say, over at my cursor, preview icon, we're gonna grab a sample of the background. And you, just like I showed you earlier, you can either check region of interest from preview, drop down and select from there, or you can just grab the preview and you see how that's an X to the right of my cursor and move up, it becomes a plus sign, drop it on, gives the coordinates. Let's reselect our image tab. And all we do, triangle, drag, and drop. And now it's using the astrometric solution and it is assigning the colors of the image as shown in nature. It sometimes takes a second and there you go. Let's exit out of Spectra Photometric Color Calibration, Preview tab, Delete All. Now we're gonna run the full Blur Exterminator. So we're gonna go to Process, All Processes, Blur Exterminator. Again, if you need help with this process, check out the tutorial. I'll have a link in the description of this video. Now, Let's uncheck correct only. You can run automatic PSF, take the triangle and drop it, it'll do just fine. I like to ensure that it has the correct number. So we need to know what do we enter into the PSF diameter pixels um, box over here. To do that, we need to extract the luminance. My cursor, over here, this little icon extracts illuminance. Ensure 24 bit stretch factor is enabled. And this is grayscale, so I'm just going to hit Control A. We're going to go to Script, Image Analysis, Full Width Half Max Eccentricity, labeled FWHM Eccentricity. Ensure your luminance is selected. Hit Measure and it's gonna spit out the median full width half max number. In this case, 2.597. I like to round to the nearest hundredth. In this case, this is gonna to round to 2.6, so that's okay. But if this, say, rounded to 2.43, you'd enter 2.43 in the PSF diameter box. In this particular case, it rounds to 2.6, so we can exit out of that. We're gonna exit out of our luminance, and we're gonna enter 2.6 into the PSF diameter box, which it's already in there. Now, all we do, triangle, drag, and drop. And if you watch, Watch as this gets close to 100%, watch what happens to the stars. Beautiful. RC Astro really does a very good job with their software. Now let's zoom in. We got noise. And we're gonna do process, all processes. We're gonna go to noise exterminator. Now I already know on denoise, 0.8 does the trick on this image. If you need help with this uh, process, check out the uh, tutorial video that I'll have linked in the description of this video. However, you just wanna get rid of uh, just enough noise. You wanna leave a little bit of noise, you don't wanna leave too much noise. 
So for example, let's go to point seven, triangle drag and drop. Never touch detail. Detail should just be left as um, default. The denoise factor is the one that you want to experiment with. Uh, we have 0.7. You see that we have, we still got some noise in there. In my opinion, it's a little bit too much, but you don't want to over smooth either. So let me show you the flip side of this. Top left corner of Picks and Sight, that little back arrow. Click on that. That brings us back. Let's go to 0.8. Eight for denoise, triangle, drag, and drop. Now we are a lot smoother, but we still have a little bit of noise. That's that's my personal uh, preference. Uh, yours may be different than mine, and that's okay. Remember, this is your vision. Uh, we can exit out of noise exterminator now. Now we do our actual stretching. And this comes down to two choices, to stretch with the stars, to stretch without the stars. Here's my word of advice. I prefer stretching without the stars and doing the rest of the processing with the stars independent from my DSO or deep sky object. Here's why. We have a very bright region of Andromeda in the core, and then we have uh, some faint dust that we want to bring out. You can end up over stretching or under stretching your stars, whichever way you look at it and whichever target you're working on. Separating the stars and processing the stars separately prevents a um, overdoing of your DSO or underdoing of your DSO and also overdoing or underdoing your stars. So my personal preference, do everything from here on out without the stars and then combine later on. So we're going to go to process, all processes, star exterminator. Another one, check out the link in the description of this video if you need further help with star exterminator. Uh, if you watch the video, you're going to hear me say, if you're working with a linear image, do not unscreen the stars. You're going to remove the stars with just a generate star image. We are linear right now. However, I'm going to unscreen the stars when I pull them out. Why is that? Uh, I don't want you to be confused. In DBE, dynamic background extraction, I mentioned that you can pull the stars out to make it a little bit easier to extract the background. That is an instance where you would just have generate star image checked. The stars are coming out linear. They're going back in linear. I am unscreening the stars to remove them because they are coming out linear. However, they're going back in after being stretched. And I find better results unscreening the stars and doing it that way. So if they're coming out linear and going back in after being stretched, you can unscreen the stars. Triangle, drag and drop. If you have any questions on that or need further clarification, drop a comment in the comment section, please. Never hesitate to ask questions. Now, once this is done, this is going to leave us with two windows. One is going to have Andromeda. The other is going to have our stars. Just like this. Now we can exit out of Star Exterminator. And... Let's uh, go ahead. We can actually exit out of screen transfer function. Let's minimize Andromeda for just a moment. Now, let's go ahead and um, go to process, all processes, histogram transformation. If you need help with this, um, check out the uh, link in the description of this video, I have another video tutorial of histogram transformation. So if you need help with histogram transformation, 
check out that video. We're going to activate our stars image over at my cursor. This icon over here will delete the auto stretch. We're going to uh, always in histogram transformation hit reset just in case there's something applied that you don't want to accidentally apply. In the drop down menu, select your stars image, open a preview window. Grab your mid-tones uh, slider and pull it left. Apply. This is the taste. This is this is how you want it to be. Mid-tone slider, pull it left. I think right about over there should be good. We're going to apply. Let's exit out of the preview. I think that's good. We're gonna reset histogram transformation, exit out, minimize our stars. We are stretched and ready to go. Now let's talk Andromeda. We're going to go to process, all processes, generalized hyperbolic stretch. Another one, if you need further help with generalized hyperbolic stretch, please check out the uh, link to my video tutorial. Uh, what we're going to do is just like with the stars over at my cursor, delete the auto stretch. We're going to find our initial symmetry point location. Start by hitting the plus sign on the magnifying glass so we can see our histogram curve. Go to the image, click and hold to the bottom right of my cursor. You see X, Y, and R. Over at R, you see 0.003. We're just going to move around. That seems to be the lowest value. My curve or my peak is a little bit to the right of the uh, histogram. This is okay in some cases. This this will work. Generally, I would be happy with that. Sometimes you'll find your peak in other random areas over here. In this case, the core of Andromeda is pretty bright. I want to try to help tame that down. So. I want to move my peak to the left, just like if I were to see my peak in some other random area. Transformation type, linear, black tone slider, grab and move it right, and we're moving our peak to the left, okay? We don't want to go too far. Accept that, reset, click and hold in the background. Now. X, Y, and R, if you look at R, 0 0.002. That's gonna be our starting point with our symmetry. So symmetry point, we're gonna grab our symmetry point slider, move it over, and now look at that symmetry point down over here. We're gonna move that slider until we hit 0 0.0002. Hit the minus sign on the magnifying glass so we can see what we're doing. Open up a preview, grab stretch factor, and let's give her a stretch. We're going to use local intensity. Pull that slider. And now what we're going to do is adjust parameter. SP is symmetry point, that is fine tuning. How dark do you want your background? And just for example, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept this stretch. We'll commit, reset, always reset. Otherwise it'll apply the same stretch that you just did. Now we want to adjust um, contrast. So let's find an area that we want to get some better contrast in. Let's, let's call it right there. Now, watch this vertical yellow line. As I click and hold and I'm moving around the image, you see how that's dancing around. Now, if we choose to do our contrast adjustment off of this area. 
here's our yellow line. We can either send that to SP or symmetry point, or we can just drag our slider. I like to drag the slider because some goofy things happen, you know? So I like to just drag the slider. Then stretch factor, give it a pull, adjust our local intensity. If you hit the preview button again, notice real-time preview generalized hyperbolic stretch. This is what's currently in your process. Hit the preview button again, real-time preview with no process listed, that is before. In other words, we have after, before. After adjustment, before adjustment, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. One final stretch, we're gonna go to the left of the peak, bring our symmetry point slider over to that yellow line, stretch factor, give it a pull, see if we can bring out some of that dust, adjust our local intensity a little bit, maybe protect some highlights, let's see what this does, before, after, before, and after. Let's accept that, reset, GHS or generalized hyperbolic stretch. Let's exit out of our preview, exit out of generalized hyperbolic stretch. Andromeda is stretched. Now we get to play with some curves. So let's go to process, all processes, curves transformation. We're gonna go um, and adjust. There's really two things that I will regularly use and that's going to be this rgb icon that's going to be contrast and then saturation those are really the only two that i will generally play with and if you need help with curves transformation i'll have a link to that process in the description of this video let's open up a preview really quick and we'll go to rgb let's See what we can do with uh, some contrast here. Here's before, here's after, before, after. Let's go ahead and accept that. Let's reset. Let's go to saturation and let's pull this curve. Let's go before, after, before, after. Let's accept that. Let's see if we can get one more out of her. Here's before, after, before, and after. Accept that, reset, and then we'll exit out of the preview. So now Andromeda is ready to go. Let's go to, um, I'm not sure why I exited out of uh, curves transformation because what I wanted to do is minimize um, the Andromeda image and actually open up the stars image. Let's open a preview. And let's see if we can just bring those stars to life just a little bit. You don't wanna go too heavy on, on the stars. Just a, just a little bit, just to give them a little bit of life. Now, our Andromeda image, image 05 underscore DBE, our stars image, image 05 underscore DBE underscore stars. This is important that these match. Whatever your primary image name is, must be in the stars image underscore stars for the stars back formula to work. This formula puts unscreened stars back into your image. And I go over this in my Star Exterminator tutorial, as well as um, actually inputting the formula and saving this pixel map to your desktop uh, or workspace in my Pixinsight installation video. 
Let's minimize stars. Let's open up Andromeda. Let's grab the triangle, drag and drop, and there you go. A finished Andromeda image. And uh, to save this, what you're gonna end up doing is you're going to go to File, Save As, navigate to a folder that you wanna save it in. I have an images final folder, both PixInsight final and shareable. Uh, PixInsight final because these save as a specific file type to contain all of the data and the information within the image. That's gonna be an XISF file and I have a specific folder called PixInsight Final. So if I wanted to, I could just bring all of that data back in and further edit if I, if I really wanted to. So let's right click, let's go New, Folder, M31. Let's hop into M31. And I'm gonna name this M31 RGB. 24, March 24, and then we're gonna save. I leave this as default, hit okay. File, save as, this PC, navigate into my images, final, shareable, let's right click, new, folder, M31. And now you choose whichever one that you want from here. I'll generally save as a TIFF file and, um, and you know, or a PNG, just depending what I'm doing with the, the image. Um, in this case, I'll just save as a TIFF, but you know, you can save as a PNG, share it on Facebook, share it with your friends. Um, You'll get a warning like this that it's not going to support some existing data. That's okay. Just hit okay. And then I will generally leave these as default. Word of caution if you're doing an HDR image or something further uh, than what we did. Sometimes it wants to save as a 64 bit. Uh, you may or may not have trouble opening the image after that. If you do, just um, resave it as a 32 bit. And that is your basic Pix and Site workflow um, for uh, processing images. So I hope that you found that useful. If you did, do me a favor. That channel icon that just popped up, hit that channel icon and subscribe. I don't want you to miss out on any valuable information. Throw a comment in the comment section. Did you learn anything new? What questions do you have? And then check out that next video. Until the next time, clear skies.